I don't even know how to start it off. Look, this is my Corvette. We got a lot of stuff done since the last video. Honestly, don't even remember what's in the last video. We painted it Porsche Oslo blue. I switched the rear fenders to uh, OEM, like Z06 wide body rear fenders and 954 garage uh, front fenders. I eat and then do it on the side. It's past lunchtime, Greg. It's 12 o'clock. I know. 11 o'clock is lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> It's turbo time! <laughs> Thought I was gonna make it. What? That'll start spinning. Damn. Eight ribbons, dude. Nah, man. I think it's just because you don't got your settings right. You're saying I'm too strong? No, it's too weak. Then get a good pinch. Hi, I'm John, and this is my second? No, that was like your fourth drink. If, okay, it's my Fifth fourth drink. drink. Let's go! Hey, my name's John, and I don't know how many shots I've had, but it's a lot. Like, uh, sure. <laughs> I heard you're like, you know, into young dudes. <laughs> I did some cheap Amazon lip kits, just painted them black, clear lenses all the way around. Inside of the headlight housings is all body color. Um, I cut a giant hole in the fiberglass rear clamshell so you can actually unbolt an aluminum plate that I put there and you can access the diff. It also makes it a lot easier just to get the top bolts out of the diff if you're ever pulling it or have to like do a clutch it makes a lot of that much simpler. Bacon neck my shirt, my sick fucking Corvette shirt. Come take a look at the beautiful um, silvers, uh, like super low something coilovers, FDF lower control arm. And then back here, you'll see the FDF uh, mild mantis um there's nothing really weird about any of that i did have to shim the upper control arm to get some camber out of it because the camber's all the way drawn in at the bottom 
and I bought some random aftermarket sway bar end links that can bolt through both ways because stock it's like one thread this way one thread this way and i needed both threads to go through the same way I guess engine bay not anything fun it already had stock uh like full bolt on billy billy boat exhaust that apparently is like really good it already had this intake that i have to change because i added a mishimoto oil cooler up here that i am going to add a fan to before grid life midwest fest we'll see you there um and then just a mishimoto radiator I replaced the radiator hoses because mine were kind of swollen and didn't look to be in the best condition. Um, and to run the lines to the engine, I got an improved racing. It's like a thermostatic sandwich plate almost that goes on the side of the block that has two 10 AN fittings. So I just ran 10 AN lines to that. Oil cooler. I'm on the fence about how I want to mount this. There's not really a lot of like crumple room in the front, especially in the corners on the vet. So I think I might mount it like kind of hidden by the front of the front wheel and then do a fan, but I don't want to kick rocks through it. So I don't know, I'm gonna take off the front bumper and see where the best place is. Basically the biggest oil cooler I can find because these things always overheat. And then I'm gonna do hood vents upgraded 160 degree thermostat. There's a improved racing. It's like a little sandwich plate basically for your oil lines. Um, but instead of it being a sandwich plate that goes to where your factory oil filter goes, which would then space the oil filter closer to the ground, this bolts into the side of the block. They send you the gasket and everything and they give you the fittings for the AN lines right out of here. Sparko. I need toe straps. I don't know if I'm gonna do the blue out. It kind of looks fresh, actually. I was thinking that, or just do black. But I'm gonna have to probably bolt these through the crash bars, and then I'll probably weld them around too, front and rear. And then I got a Mishimoto radiator. This has built-in oil cooler and built-in trans cooler, but my new trans doesn't have a trans cooler, and I'm running a separate oil cooler. So that's the bait. Good old seven millimeter. Cause America. Slid out for it. Just slide right in there. I really wish that it was like an inch longer, like most men do. But you can get Arco. I should trim it. Why? Because she's small enough to get in those tight little crevices. It's gonna explode on my face. Watch. Yeah, I have my safety glasses on. My safety squints.
Whatever. You can get a toe strap in there. Hook. So we're back today working on the Corvette. All by my lonesome. Xavier's picking up his uh, S2000 from the tuner right now. He should be here in like an hour or two. Um, so we're just back doing the radiator, oil cooler, making the lines. I gotta get through the thermostat also, and I completely forgot to get a gasket, which sucks. But I uh, test fitted the intake, it's just sitting on there so I can figure out where exactly to put the oil cooler because the intake is literally right in the center where I want to put it. I don't really want to get a different intake because I don't really know if that's going to work either. I don't really want to put it out here just because it might get hit if like you're tandeming with somebody and hit the corner of the bumper. So I might offset it and mount it like in here. I also have to do the toe strap, which I'll probably end up welding to this right here. Yeah, so here's the cage from Cage Kits. Um, they like have a CNC mandrel bender. So they basically scan the inside of your car with a 3D scanner and then they make a cage in CAD and then they just put it through this machine and it just bends everything perfect every time, super close to the chassis, like all the room that you can get, which you definitely need in the Corvette because one, the roof comes off, two, the roof is really low, the windshield's already super short and just having more room to get in and out of the car just makes it so much better. And they come like pre-notched and they're all labeled and they even have guides of like where the bars should meet up with it. It comes with plates to mount to the chassis. This is probably the back rails that go to the frame rails in the trunk. This is where the cage like bolts in uh, right by like the driver and passenger footwell, like where the door hinges are basically on the inside. Look what the cat dragged in. My trailer. The trailer thieves are back. How'd it go? We need to get a tune. No tune. Shit is sick. I take it to get to, and I come back with a messed up bumper. This shit was all fucked up. I'm like, bro, how do you even do that? Got some sweet Sparco toe hooks bolted to the crash bars. Looks really cute. Up here, I just put in my whatever Sparco QRTR seat. I just took it, stole it out of my Z. I'm gonna steal the other one out of my Z also because Albert's buying it. Um, and then I just did an NRG short hub with a quick release. Running the same wheel out of my Z for now. I'm gonna give him this with the Z. Stole the fire extinguisher out of the Z with this really expensive Ren Sport mount. Yeah, my uh, dish towel, because I was at the track this past weekend and the brake line was like rubbing right into my knee. So uh, my friend just gave me a dish towel, I just wrapped it over it. Um, and then it's just FDF handbrake. I really didn't like any of the other options because they lost the other cup holder. And I want, I like the handbrake as close to the wheel as possible. Um, and then Drift HQ lines and Drift HQ 
dual caliper. Um, I don't know what's going on with it. I can't tell if it's the pad that just wears really fast because it's like that poly matrix. But it, you can see there's like metal shavings on the top of the caliper. I'm going to look into that when I put it up on a lift and see if maybe I have to change that out. So the last things that I did was uh, ECS spool, which you basically take apart the diff, pull the clutches out of the diff that allow it to slip because eventually they'll wear out and you don't want your tires or your diff becoming an open diff mid drift because then you might crash into a wall. So take apart the diff, swap them out with just solid clutch. Um, that and then there's the uh, trans brace that braces the diff to the trans because with all the clutch kicking and everything, uh, Corvettes, they tend to like break the diff, kind of like my other one, but this diff is stronger, but just extra reassurance. Um, but yeah, everything pretty much has worked perfectly. I took it out to two drift events so far, one at Capital Raceway, which is sweet because it's like the first, or the only track in Maryland that allows drifting. And it went pretty well. My caster was a little too high, so my wheels were kind of grabbing or my, like when I was steering, the wheel would hit the fiberglass in the front. So it would stop like halfway. I'd have to kind of like force it through it. But that was really the only issue I had that whole day. And then this past weekend, we went to Shenandoah Speedway and we did, it was like a tandem and line practice, which was really sweet because it was very accommodating for tandems. Like they were like lining everybody up. But yeah, so before Grid Life, which Xavier, me, Tim, and Ryan are all going to June 3rd and 4th, the Midwest Fest, uh, I got to cage the car, put the other seats in it. That'll be probably the next episode. I got wheels coming because this thing needs silver wheels because of all the beautiful clear lenses. The black, black looks cool, but it's definitely, it will definitely look way better with silver wheels. But yeah, basically that's everything that you need to make your Corvette reliable drift car. You don't really need all those things. All in all, how much do you think you spent? Car included? Uh, yeah. I think with like the trans, the diff, and literally all of like the modifications, so it's like right around 10 grand. So it doesn't seem like the best deal now. But 20 grand for a 30,000 mile fully, everything that I need done to it, Corvette, and it's how I want it. I think it's I pretty good. That's a fairly decent deal. Yeah, I think you so. got a clean, I mean. I mean, I probably spent more money on that. And it's just not as cool. Like this thing literally just looks crazy. Just, it looks like a fucking exotic car. It's so low to the ground. Like the floor, the wooden floor is like two inches from the ground. You get in it, it's like you're so low. It's so cool. Yeah, well worth it and come see us at Grid Life. I don't know if you can come into the pits and hang out with us or how any of that stuff works at all because I can't get in contact with anybody at Grid Life about anything. But yeah, if you can, come by, see us. We'll be camping, probably hungover, half asleep. Xavier will be asleep. <laughs> yeah. um, I won't be hurting. Yeah, we'll all be hurting. Up all night partying with all the pro drivers.